This is AI art, art that is generated from a computer. You type in a bit of text and you get images just like this. And it's just like almost like a click of a button almost. And today I'm gonna to show you how you can do that using a tool called Mid Journey, which has taken off popularity lately and is uh, it's pretty cool, pretty fun to use and very addictive. So in order to sign up, you get a free trial first, you're gonna to head to discord.com and you're gonna to wanna to actually create a Discord account. So you can log in or head down to register and add your details. And once you've signed up and verified your email, you wanna head over to midjourney.com. So at midjourney.com here, you do have to sign up and to join the beta and accept the invite and continue to Discord. Now, when you get to the Midjourney page here, there is a, a bit of going on. There's a few images you can see straight away that other people have created. There's also a little guide here to getting started if you want to read that, but we're just going to get straight into how to use this uh, as a, when you're trial. So you can, if you do go through and pay for an account at the end of your trial, you can go to the Midjourney bot and actually type and send in prompts that way. But for now, we're going to find a newbie channel and you're gonna be sort of thrown in with everyone else. So you're gonna see the things that everyone else is creating. So the way it works is we head down to here, got it, all right. So in order to get started, we type in slash imagine and then we hit space and this prompt shows up. And this is where we type in what it is we wanna create. So we can create a few uh, nifty little things. So we're gonna start off with something just a little bit different. So let's just say uh, purple human with wings. You will have to scroll a little bit and find your little highlighted um, piece there. Okay, so let's produce this little preview of a purple man with wings. And uh, we're gonna go through a few different things you can do to also you know, produce something a little bit different. But uh, you can see we can pick any one of these to upscale. So we can go through and click any of these to upscale one, two, three, or four. Or we can use these to create more variations of a particular image. So I think this one, number one, is pretty interesting. So I'm going to hit upscale one, and we're going to wait for that to upscale. You can slowly watch this image come to life and be generated. It does tend to bounce around a little bit, but around here we have our purple man with wings, and I can click on that and have a closer look. And this is what we've ended up with, our purple man with wings. But there's a little bit more I wanna show you ways you can tweak it. So we're gonna try something completely different. You'll notice we now have upscale to max, which means if we want to, we can actually upscale it again and make the image higher resolution. This one's only 10, 1024 by 1024 pixels. Not only will it make the image larger, but it'll also add more detail. So we're gonna go down and we're going to try something completely different. We're gonna drop in Imagine. A cyborg skull with glowing eyes and we're going to explore a few different styles of that one prompt so you can see here we have our skulls not super high resolution because it's still just the preview but uh, we can choose uh, as many of these as we want to to upscale but we're going to upscale this third one and see how it turned out so now you can see our uh, cyborg skull and it has a bit of a painted look to it but uh, there's a few other things we can do so what i'm actually going to show you is ways you can change the style and ways you can change some of the commands to get more customized results. And anytime you do punch in commands, you're never gonna get the same two results. So let's go through and trial that right now. So once again, we're gonna to go to slash imagine, cyborg skull glowing eyes, comma, 3D render. And what I'm also gonna do is type in another command to make the image taller and I can go dash dash AR, which stands for aspect ratio. You put two dashes, AR, and then you can make it say 16 to nine if you wanna make it say television size, or you can make it say four to eight, and that way it's sort of four units wide by eight minutes tall. You can put whatever aspect ratio in there you want to get a pretty cool result. So I'm gonna go nine by 16, so we get kind of like a TV size, but turned on its side, and let's try that out. So again, we got these cool four images and you can see they are looking a little bit more like 3D renders in the preview and we'll get a lot more detail out of it when we upscale them. I'm actually gonna upscale the first and second so we can see how they look. So you'll notice a much cleaner sort of rendered look uh, as opposed to the painted look we had before, which if we pop side by side, you can see quite clearly. So very interesting results. Now, if we change 3D render to dripping ink sketch with the same prompt, we also get a vastly different style again, which is actually more of a drawing style and is also pretty cool. 
To further demonstrate this difference in style, I've also tried colorful comic book style uh, cartoon drawing as well as World War I found photograph. And you can see the difference in each one as well as a stone statue look where I typed in hyper-realism to get this effect. So we can get a lot of different styles, but what about the quality? There's actually a command for quality, which you type in dash dash Q, and you can go anywhere from one to five last time I checked. So I did another version of a 3D render with a quality of three added to the command. So this has tripled the render time and increased the quality, which if you zoom in, you can see just a bit more detail in this image. And now we're going to add stylize. The default is 2500. I'm going to add in 20,000. And this is going to further stylize this 3D render to get an even different effect as Midjourney sort of stylizes it in a way. And this is the result. But let's move on to something a bit different. I've actually got here an image of me that I have on one of my websites. I'm actually going to use that, put it into a prompt in Midjourney and get some results. So let's take a look. So you can see here, I got the URL of my image right here and I typed in colorful monster in the dark temple glowing because I wanted to see if I could get them to put a spin on the image to see what kind of result I would get and I got nothing to do with the image because what I need to do is add image weight image weight is dash dash IW if I scroll down you'll see it here it presents as one dash on screen but there's two dashes IW and the default is 0.25 and I'm not sure how high it goes I just popped in an image weight of two and you start to see where the image is included, things like my beard and um, made things a little bit different. And if we scroll down, I've got another set of images here, an image weight of four, where it was just a little bit crazier, but kind of less exciting. And um, the final result of the first one is this, which I think is actually pretty artistic and um, pretty cool based off my image. And then we've also got these ones here, which had an image weight of five. And you can see they've basically almost tried to recreate my face. So it's not as exciting to play with as I thought it would be. But another cool feature that I think is worth exploring if you're looking to see what Midjourney is capable of. Now, if you do want to see more of the commands and codes I've used and added to the end of the prompt site on this video, there is actually a complete list, which I'm going to pop a link to in the description below, along with uh, also just a portfolio of just like some images I've created and uh, to give you a bit of an idea. But Another place you can look is if you log into your Midjourney account, which at the moment you can see my feed. If I just go to midjourney.com, which I'll show you quickly, you simply just sign in there, you'll get taken to your account. You can see all the images you've created. So these are the images I've created. And you can actually see this if you go into your account because there is actually a community you can access. There's a community feed here. These are sort of some of the, like, the hot items. So the stuff that's doing, that's really popular in the community at the moment. There's also things like rising and new, but the cool thing about this is if I really want to do something like this myself, I can click on these three dots here and copy the command. I can copy the prompt, which is just the prompt, but the command also copies some of the codes at the end. So you can go through and try some of this stuff out for yourself and see what results you get or modify something you like here to add something you like. But uh, it's also just a great way to get some inspiration and see some of the unique stuff being created on mid journey at the moment. Uh, now the other thing is your account. If you do decide after you've gone through this whole process, tried out the trial and you want to actually sign up for an account, you can also go manage plan down the bottom here. You pay $10 a month, gets you about 200 images or $30, which is pretty much unlimited. But if you use up too much uh, of your, what they call fast time, you'll be put into relax mode, which means you can still keep going, but just a little slower. But uh, I know I've got uh, people I know using over a couple of thousand images just on the standard membership. And uh, just remember, everything you create will be public. So anything you're creating here is actually something that people can access and see on the Mid Journey um, in their Mid Journey account. Uh, unless you go for, there's actually some enterprise level plans here that you can, or you can pay $50 for privatization. There's a few different options there. Uh, but essentially, it's all yours to use. One thing I will say too, if you are creating any images using Midjourney, please make sure that if you're sharing them online, just mention that this is AI generated art. Um, a lot of people have been posting images online without any, saying anything about it, getting a lot of bad feedback because it kind of does imply sometimes that you are the creator of that art, but it's good to always just preface it and say that this is AI art generated with Midjourney. 
so people know that you're not trying to fool them, so to speak. <laughs> but uh, I've got links below. Check any of that out if you want to check out Mid Journey for yourself. The links to Discord Mid Journey, Mid Journey are below. The links to all the codes are below. Any other information I've got in regards to Mid Journey, I will also compile down there so you can learn a bit more and find some resources. Otherwise, thanks for watching the video. I hope you have a great day.